also like to say that these are so heavy like I could knock a bitch out with these like sign me the heck up I was so invested everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my July wrap-up part two out of three this month I read 15 books so like I said this is part two if you are interested in the other 10 books I read I will link those videos down below once they're uploaded and you guys can check them out so without further ado let us get started the first book that I have is the children on the hill by Jennifer McMahon and I gave this a four out of five stars this book follows Dr. Helen Hildreth, who is a well-renowned lead researcher at a treatment center in Vermont for the mentally ill. She lives with her two grandchildren, Eric and Violet, whose parents died in a car accident many years ago. When she brings home a patient named Iris, the children become inseparable. They even create a monster hunting club together. One night, tragedy strikes and their lives are changed forever. And now years later, a podcaster named Lizzie Shelley returns to Vermont where a girl has gone missing who claimed to see a monster before it happened. I really loved the alternating timelines in this. We get 1978 where we follow 13 year old Vi as our main narrator leading up to the tragedy and we also get 2019 where we follow the podcaster Lizzie Shelley. I really liked trying to figure out the mystery behind the missing girls. I think that both Lizzie and Vi were really interesting characters to be in their heads. Although I was able to call the big reveal pretty early on in the book, I still really enjoyed my time reading. The book is definitely more of a slow burn, so if you're looking for a fast-paced thriller, this may not be for you. I also dropped a star because I found the ending to be rather lackluster, but overall it was still a really fun read and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Crier's War by Nina Valera and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This has been on my TBR for ever now. So I am very happy I finally picked it up and I'm definitely intrigued to pick up the sequel. But if you do not know, this series follows Automa, which were created by humans to serve their barren queen. When the Automa overtook their rulers, a new age started. And now years later, Ayla is a human servant who is looking for revenge for the, the death of her family. She plans to kill the sovereign's daughter, Lady Cryer, and after a very strange encounter, she's actually offered the position of Lady Cryer's handmaiden. But as she spends more time with Lady Cryer, Ayla starts to second guess what she really wants. I honestly didn't expect to like this story as much as I did, which is why I put off reading it for so long, but right from the very beginning of this book, I was instantly hooked and needed to know how it was going to end. I was a big fan of how slow burn Ayla and Lady Cryer's relationship was. I am a huge sucker for enemies to lovers, and the fact that this was like unknown enemies to lovers, like sign me the heck up. I was so invested. I really enjoyed the alternating points of view between the two girls. I think that it was a great way to learn more about them. I was also a fan that the romance wasn't the huge focus of this book. There is so much more political intrigue and court politics going on in this. Like I said, I'm very intrigued to see where the story goes. I need to find a copy of the second book so that I can dive into it, but I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Next book that I have is The Younger Wife by Sally Hepthorne, and this one I gave a 4 out of 5 stars as well. This follows Tully and Rachel, two sisters whose very successful father is about to marry a much younger woman named Heather. The girls are instantly skeptical of Heather and her motives because they're their mother is sick in a home with dementia and she has no idea who Heather is to their father. As they spend more time with Heather, they quickly realize that she has some secrets that she's hiding, but they also realize that their father has some pretty dark secrets that he has tried very hard for years to keep hidden, and it's like the story of that. This was a very slow burn, character-driven story, but I really enjoyed it. We get different points of views from the two sisters as well as a mystery point of view, which I thought was such a great way to tell the story. The story starts off at the wedding ceremony and it is told from the mystery point of view, which instantly had me hooked and wanting to know more about who this character was and what they knew. I just think that the scenes from the wedding sprinkled throughout the story was a great way to build suspense 
I loved learning more about each of these characters and their own personal mental health struggles that they were dealing with alongside their concern for their mother and Heather's motives. I listened to this one on audiobook and each of the points of views had a different narrator which I thought was really well done. The end of the book was more open-ended so if you're not exactly a fan of that this may not be for you but overall I think this was a pretty solid read and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. And then the two final books are actually graphic novels of the same series so they are the Montague Twins series. The first one in the series is called The Witch's Hand. The second one is The Devil's Music. Music. And these are by Nathan Page and Drew Shannon. I would also like to say that these are so heavy, like I could knock a bitch out with these. This follows Pete and Alistair Montagu who are teenage detectives and they also know a little bit of magic. A strange storm on the beach thrusts them into their next mystery when three girls go missing. These were both very quick reads. I loved how it took place in the 1960s. It gave very small town vibes. Everyone seemed to know everybody in this town and I was a big fan of that. I loved these characters and their interactions. They had so much cheeky banter between them that I was just smiling ear to ear throughout the majority of this book. I think that the mystery behind the three missing girls was really well done, although I will say that it began to drag a little bit in the middle of the book. I really liked the art style and the colors that were used. It was a lot of more like dull tones, which I just thought fit the vibe really well in the book. The biggest complaint that I have for this one is that the villain was so boring. I was just so disappointed in their involvement in this. I just found them to be completely not villainous. So I ended up giving us a three out of five stars, but I did end up giving the second book, The Devil's Music, a four out of five stars. So it kind of made up for it. So this again follows the two boys, Pete and Alistair, and they meet a famous musician named Gideon who ends up coming to one of their shows. He takes an interest in their small group and as they spend more time together they start to realize that Gideon may be into some darker things than they expected. Gideon may be behind the devil's music that has been sweeping the nation which seems to cause people to harm themselves after listening and it's the story of the twins trying to figure out if that's the case or not. Like I said I gave this a four out of five stars. I definitely enjoyed it more than the first one. I think that the characters and their relationships really shone in this book and we got to see more of them interacting with each other. Their banter again was so well done. It's just so much fun to read about and again the art style and the colors just go so well with the overall vibes of this book. So I definitely enjoy this one more than the first one but together they're a lot of fun and I definitely recommend picking them up if you're into paranormal-ish stuff. Alright everybody, so those were the next five books that I read for the month of July. If you're interested in the other ten books, I will leave those videos down below for you to check out. Let me know what you read this month and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!